Well, I'm at my friend's house, Rich's house, looking at his Arowana Tanganyikan tank that we've been talking about. Today's Saturday, February 19th, 2011. He's got three different types of Arowanas, and I don't, I don't know. I think one's called a Giardini, and uh, I don't know the names of the others. But the one right here, the biggest one, he's got, he does have drop eye in both eyes. Rich thinks that he's. Uh, that particular type is more susceptible. And the other two are not. Oh, let me zoom in. Yeah, the other two aren't. These guys are nasty. When we put the fish in at first, they were intended to be food. The, the Leilupis, the Neolamprologus Leilupi, um, I, I put them in there. I gave them to them as food because they're stunted. I didn't want to uh, bring them to a store. I didn't consider them worth selling. And uh, maybe about five got eaten, but as we had them in the bag, the fish actually attacked the bag and grabbed it out of his hand and, and cut it open. So they're they're pretty, uh, you know, they're they're definitely carnivores. They definitely go after things floating. But if you can see, they're not touching the fish at the bottom. The lay loopies are controlling the whole bottom, and there's also four Julitochromus transcriptus from. Uh, from, what do you call it? Pembe in here and then in this corner let me get closer there's Lamprologus multifasciatus in the shells let's see if let's see you know what I'll pull this chair up <clears throat> that way I can keep it stiller yeah here they are the shells cover the whole front of the tank they go right down to the glass. There's actually 700 in here, and the, the tank is six feet long, and it spans the whole front. So we are hoping to see a big colony develop. We're going to get a couple more from five or ten more from uh, another source so we can mix up the genes. Uh, so. This, this rock here is a piece of rock that I got at our old Boy Scout camp in uh, southern Sussex County. It was actually on a private property, and uh, we just made it our own troop camp. But we don't have too much access to it anymore. Eh, but here it is. It looked, it looked neat, but I didn't really care for it in my tank because you can see the, the, the round... Uh, pebbles or inclusions there between the layers and it just I just couldn't use it so I gave some to Rich and he really liked it and then last night he put this big shell in the bigger one that's right in the front here and he said right away one of the uh, one of the biggest multifasciatus went over to it also all of the uh, lay loopies they just went right to it they were picking at it so the big guy the big multi went inside and then one of the smaller ones took over his shell so now the big guy's fighting between his his old shell and the, and the new shell so so far I don't believe there's any multis inside of it but the uh, it's amazing you can see these lay loopies all over let's come over here now and uh, Rich also said you know there's the jewel of the chromis they're out okay they're right on top of the rock there I guess I'm zoomed in as far as I can go. Yeah. These are still small. They're still young. The Julitochromis raised locally. And, well, there's one underneath. Where's my finger? Right here. One, one underneath this rock. Then there's another up top there. And then there's another in the cave right in here. Rich said that they evicted all the Le Lupis and that they're pretty much taking over those caves there. There's a big piece of driftwood that goes up to the top of the tank and beyond. There's a, a cover up top that allows you to have a, an air gap so you can see a piece of driftwood through there and he's got some floating plants that are draped down into the tank. And I do forget what that's called. Is that, uh, boy, 
forget the name of the plant. I wonder if you can see it from the side. No, okay. Well, here's a side view of the tank, though. There's his overflow. Let's see. Let me zoom out. Okay. Boy, the, uh, now, now you can see the band of shells. He said he was going to put a strip of plastic in there to separate his gravel from the shells, but I don't see it. This is huge gravel. I know that not even an adult Leilupi is going to move any of that stuff. It's easily whew, half inch, some are even three quarters of an inch in diameter. They're, they're not going to move that. That's going to be impossible. This tank is uh, 300 gallons. It's six feet long, three feet from front to back, and 20, I think it's 28 inches high, something like that. It, it big enough, or short enough, so it can get through a doorway. And it's really beautiful, I, you know, the size-wise. I would have it planted. I'd have different substrate in here. But uh, this is what Rick, it's really an arowana tank. I was kidding him, though. He said, pretty soon this is going to be a Tanganyikan tank with arowana instead of an arowana tank with Tanganyikans. So, this was an experiment, and it seems to be succeeding. The pH is 7.4. Uh, that's really just the local tap water. He doesn't adjust it. He doesn't modify anything. So, here's this big piece of driftwood sticking down here. He's got it resting over the top. He did want to have some, some type of a lizard floating on the top. Not floating, but uh, living up in there, but he never did. Uh, but these plants are going to be a biofilter, that's for sure. This stand was built by a, a mutual friend of ours. It actually is a dog pen for his dog. Let me move to the side here. See, he can, I don't know if you can see that or not. But this is the dog pen. Half the tank is his pen, or half the space underneath. And the other side is, uh, what well, has it open? I guess you push it. Mm. I don't know. I don't even know how to open the door. I don't want to. Oh, there you go. And it's just, it's got a couple drawers that pull out. It's nice. Nice piece of work. close. There it goes. Okay. So, let's see. I come over here more and zoom in. <clears throat> the goal now is to get some of the lay loopies out. There's way too many. There's probably at least 25. And Rich is, Rich is convinced that they're growing, so that's going to be another... Uh, thing for me to look at to see how big they do eventually get. I didn't take care of them. They spawned in my tank at home. I wasn't interested in keeping any of them and I just ignored them <laughs> until they got big enough that the tank was be overrun. It was only a 38 gallon tank with six adults and uh, these guys were in there so I tore the entire tank down, took all the water out, scooped these guys out, brought them over here to be fed to the fish and they didn't get eaten. So now we're going to try to trap them. Rich is going to get a, a wide mouth bottle and we'll drop it in and hope that the fish will just start going in it little by little and then we can just start removing them because it's next to impossible to catch them out of here. But his wife, Priscilla, is really happy with seeing the babies or seeing these other fish in here. The colors are pretty and the interaction is neat. That one Julie is right in the center there in no man's land. Rich said that it's the one, it's the smallest of the four and it gets uh, pushed out by the others. Here's one here. I don't know if the video picks it up but the glass is stained a little bit from uh, mineral deposits. There's a I just sent away for a free sample of a new product. I forget the name, but it's supposed to clean stuff like this. And we'll see. We're going to test it.
Yeah, these guys would definitely love to form a cave underneath the substrate, but there's no way they're going to move it. Let's see if I move this up. Yeah, that's better. I forget how many uh, watts of light he's got in there. It almost looks like he's got an actinic light. No, not, no, it's not actinic, but it's a grow bulb. Alright, well here we're up to 10 minutes. These are the guys that are the feature of the tank. Rich feeds some pellets. Not they're pellets or uh, actually they're they're sticks. Carnivore sticks. And they gulp them down every once in a while. He'll throw a mouse in or something like that for them to for them to eat. But uh, we're going to look into new life spectrum pellets or ocean nutrition reef. Uh, boy, what's it called? It's a reef product. Uh, no, formula. That's what it is. Formula One. That's what. Yeah, ocean nutrition formula one. That's what I feed my fish. All right. So this is the tank. Give an update at some future point.